Um, as usual, we've got the, the real subject matter experts with us. Um, so I promise I'm not going to be teaching you any coding. So while we are just waiting for everybody to join, um, I have some exciting news for everybody. So if you take a look at the chat right now, um, you'll see that I've just dropped a Google form. So please, can you guys complete that as soon as possible? It's just your basic details. Um, and if you complete it, you stand a chance to be one of 10 winners that we're going to select randomly randomly to win 10 USD each in crypto. Um, okay, I can see I'm dropping it one more time, Alok. Sorry, there you go. Can you see it now? Yeah, also um, for, for clarify a little bit, uh, be careful to fill the name correctly because the name will be used for your certificate, right, Brenton? Absolutely, absolutely. So you guys will see there on the form, uh, it reminds you, double check the name that you put down and make sure it's the name that you want on your certificate. Because exactly as you submit your name on the Google form, that's what's going to appear on your certificate, um, you know, as, as well as CZ signature. So, you know, on that point as well, Jeff, um, I know a lot of students, uh, it's perfectly fine. You, we, we know a lot of us have work, etc. Maybe you fell a little bit behind. But if you want to graduate, so if you want to receive that certificate with CZ signature on, then you need to urgently make sure that this weekend you go back and you complete the tasks from week one, two, and three, um, especially week three's tasks. So please, before Monday, make sure the guys, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine if you fell behind a little bit. But please make sure that if you want to graduate, don't say that we didn't tell you. If you want to graduate before this weekend, you need to make sure that you um, catch up on that backlog. You finish week one, two, and three, and that you fill in the Google form. Um, Dita, I'm dropping it again in the chat. There you go. So again, double check those names. It's exactly as you put it down, that's how it's gonna show up on your certificate. Okay, I guess uh, we have uh, a lot of audience now and maybe we can start. Okay. Hello guys. Nice to meet you again. Maybe some of you have already met me last week. In case some of you just uh, skipped the last week's lecture, um, let me introduce myself again. Uh, I'm Elay. And I'm the community supervisor of White Matrix and the Chen IDE. Uh, so today I will uh, discuss about the further about decentralized finance and uh, as known as DeFi, right? And I will introduce some DeFi applications such as Uniswamp and Maker. At last, I will show you how to create your own cryptocurrency by ERC20 ERC and BEP20. So after that, I will use the cryptocurrency that we create to build a farming application. Okay, uh, let's start today's lecture. So following the contents of today's lecture, the first part uh, about the basic conception of decentralized finance. In this part, we will talk about the innovation in DeFi and how it influenced the traditional finance. The second part, we will talk some existing products uh, or in DeFi 
like we will talk about Uniswamp and the maker about its theory and its history. And at the part three, uh, I will talk about what we will build today. Uh, I will introduce the ERC20 standard at first, and I will introduce the farming system. Okay, uh, part one, a disruptive innovation, the decentralized finance. You may notice the disruptive, uh, disruptive described, right? So when some innovation is disruptive, it will bring a revolution to the origin stuff. Uh, as far as all of you, I guess, know the CFI is the traditional finance system, which like users trust their uh, trust some third party uh, entities. Like you trust the bank, you trust the country. So you trust these third party entities. You can give your money or give your, give your, uh, give your good to the uh, third party entities. entities. And uh, the, send, the third party entities will provide some service to you. Uh, we can give some uh, simple example about these uh, third party entities like Binance, Coinbase, and uh, Kraken. Those are three of the centralized exchange. And we can give some another like uh, the bank, right? Uh, like the some traditional Wall Street uh, company. Those are the CFI. And then we can talk about DeFi. So uh, DeFi is an acronym for decentralized finance. So the most important things about DeFi is it's decentralized. That is, DeFi, in fact, is a movement that champions the provision of P2P financial service. So in the DeFi financial service, every service can just arrive at every person and have no need of the third party entities. Uh, DeFi can achieve uh, eliminating centralized authorities by using the blockchain technology. And I have made some example of DeFi, like Compound. Compound is uh, a kind of uh, lend, provide lending service uh, and uh, it can provide some uh, liquidation service. So uh, Compound is, you can, you can see like uh, a bank and I will introduce it next week. A second is Maker. Maker is, Maker is a project that can help you to stake some asset and uh, mint a stable coin. And the third is Uniswamp. Uniswamp is, uh, is, an, is a decentralized exchange and it's become huge success uh, in last year. Everyone knows Uniswamp now, I guess. Okay, and now uh, we will talk about some difference between traditional finance system and decentralized finance system. In traditional finance, every bank, every bank have a center and every center uh, is independent. Like you, you have some money uh, in European and uh, you want to transfer it to Africa, right? Uh, you, you, you should go through the SWIFT system. You can't just transfer money directly from the European bank to the, uh, to the Africa bank. You should through some system. And every branch need to communicate with the center and decide their daily activities. Because uh, every branch controlled by the bank center, right? They can't decide by themselves. And uh, because there are so many branches, uh, that will, it will be complicated to organize all of the bank system. And uh, this is about make a synchronization between the branches and the centers. Uh, like I just uh, talked about, if you, want uh, if you want to transfer money from European to Africa, the first thing is you need to 
uh, transfer the money from a Euro European bank branch to the European bank center. And you have to transfer the money from European bank center through, through the SWIFT system to the Africa bank center. And the, the Africa bank center need to transfer money from bank center, African bank center to Africa branches. So as you can see, there are so many uh, there are so many process during during the old system, right? So if we want to simplify this system, what should we do? Now we have we can use the blockchain te technology. All of the branches and center can be connected and synchronized easily. So there is no more uh, such branches to central or central to central process. You can directly from one bank to the other bank. The bank can be users. So you can directly from one users to other users. You can directly transfer your money to other users. So everything will become more easy. And now there are several examples proves that traditional finance scenario can be migrate to centralized to decentralized way. Like 5% of the global trade volume is settled through USDT now. Okay, and uh, I will talk some um, comparison between CFI and uh, DeFi. In CFI companies, it, you can easily, especially uh, with some current fiat currencies, you may need some KYC, right? Uh, like if you want to register a bank account, you need to KYC the account. And uh, the bank may have a centralized authority, right? But if you want to uh, register address in DeFi centralized, in DeFi ecosystem, you have no need to provide any KYC at now, I guess, yeah. And the second is the CFI will use the traditional database. Like the database is only controlled by the CFI uh, company or some organization. And in DeFi, DeFi is based on the blockchain, which is the uh, database that controlled by uh, a lot of nodes around the world. And the second is uh, the CFI is always controlled by a third party an entity that we just mentioned, and the DeFi have no need with it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the fourth is DeFi is lack of transparency because everything in the DeFi account can, can see by us, right? We, we, can't, we can't see details. But in CFI, we can see everything on the blockchain. We can just check the blockchain log Check the check to uh, by checking the low, we can see what DeFi happens and we can see every transaction. So everything uh, is transparency. And uh, but there there can be some advantage of CFI, right? Because CFI, you pay their money, they will provide a uh, customer support. So it may be the cost about the customer support. The CFI can be better than the DeFi. The DeFi's customer support is provided by the community. The beauty of DeFi is uh, anyone can, uh, anyone with a device and internet can as have access to the financial product. Because until now, I guess there are still many areas lack, lacking a complete financial system service. But if you want to use the bank service on internet, you should have an account first, right? I think human beings are equal. They deserve the same service. So I think DeFi, uh, DeFi provide an equal way, a fair way to everyone. So they can use the, uh, the financial service very easily. Okay. And nowadays, more and more applications just appeared on the blockchain platform. All, pl all financial applications in the real world, like I, I show in the left part, have a corresponding product in the blockchain. 
including the stable coin. You can find the uh, US dollars, the Euro, uh, or some Yuan uh, on the blockchain. And uh, also there are some banks on the blockchain too, like uh, some similar some similar product we can find, find out. The compound, the AVE, yeah, they provide the similar uh, service as the bank. And we can find derivatives. Yeah, there are some uh, options, uh, options service or some um, betting service on the blockchain. Okay, and we can find a lot of wallet, although it's not like the real world wallet, but it can store money. It can store the cryptocurrency, right? And it can also store some NFT, so not fungible token. It can, uh, it can on behalf of some contract or some uh, unique things. Okay, and we also have some insurance project here. We have the next M, we have cover. So as you can see, we can find all, almost all of the application that we can find on the real world on blockchain. I think the, it means that the blockchain ecosystem is very completely now, although it has a lot of space that we can expand, but we can do every uh, daily basic activities on the blockchain now. Now I'm going to introduce a new item, uh, a new term uh, named in DeFi, which is TVL. The TVL means total value locked uh, in some project. Like here, I just use the TVL is for the whole DeFi ecosystem. The lock here means you lock some specific token, like you lock ETH, you lock DTC or you lock some ERC20 token on a, on a project. So the project maybe give you some interest or some rewards. Mm, the more TVL you have can partially reflect the success of the project. Like you store the more money in, in one bank, the bank can be successful. Uh, the whole market TVL increase rapid, uh, rapidly in last year, we can see this picture. It increased from uh, less than 1 billion to thir uh, 32 billion, I guess. And nowadays it becomes higher and higher. The second things I'm going to talk about is the trading volume. The trading volume related to two, two project, uh, two, two classifications, I guess. The first is the centralized exchange, and the second is the decentralized exchange. Um, we can we can see uh, in the picture there are there are two classifications. The first classification is uh, orange orange color, and the second is the white color. We can see that all of the trading volume is also grows rapidly, and the partial of the decentralized exchange also grows rapidly too. So in fact, uh, in last year's August, in 20, 2020 August, uh, the Uniswam just become successful and uh, suddenly everyone knows about DEX. So after that, DeFi just uh, become bigger and bigger. Everyone knows about how to trading a token, not by a centralized exchange. And uh, all of the trading volume on Uniswamp is become like, I guess the yesterday trading volume is 1 billion, 1 billion per day. And it grows 307% uh, uh, in last year. So as you can see, the trading volume can partially reflect the growth of the DeFi market, right? The more trading volume in the DeFi market, it means more people just come in the DeFi ecosystem and join it. 
Okay, and uh, at last, maybe I will talk about some DeFi conception. There is a five system, a five layer system to classify the application. I will introduce the layer one by one. Okay, let's start with the uh, settlement layer. In the settlement layer, it consists of the blockchain and its native protocol assets like Bitcoin uh, or the Ethereum. Right. It allows the network to store ownership information securely and ensure that the state change follow its rules, follow the ETH rules or BTC rules. Right. So it's the basic, basic layer. And the second layer is the asset layer. On the asset layer, it consists of all the assets they are issued on the top of the settlement layer like you build some uh, token based on Ethereum, right? So it belongs to the asset layer. All of the ERC20 or ERC721 uh, or some other, other platform uh, token belongs to the asset layer. The second layer is the protocol layer. The protocol layer provides a standard for specific use case such as decentralized exchange, uh, we talk about Uniswamp, right? And the debt market, uh, the DYDX, the compound, uh, the derivatives, uh, like um, option service, and the on-chain assets management, like YFI, uh, not, not YFI, YFI is not the on-chain asset management, okay? These standards are usually implemented as a set of uh, smart contracts and can be assessed by users. As such, this these protocols are highly interpretable. Like this, uh, this contract provides service to users directly. So users can use this protocol to do some, uh, to, to enjoy some service. And if you want to lending some money, you can just use the lending contract you want to uh, do some trade uh, about derivatives, you can just interact with some derivatives contract. Okay. And the fourth layer is the application layer. The application layer creates the user-oriented application that connect to individual uh, protocols. Like you provide some uh, service based on some individual protocols. Uh, because if you have a smart contract, in the traditional world, every system will have a back end and a front end, right? You have a smart contract. That only means you have a back end. And you need to have a web page to let the users to select the, the, uh, the smart con to interact with the smart contract, right? So the application there uh, is kind of means the web page or the interface that provides to the user. Then the user can be uh, just slick click one button then can they can interact with some uh, uh, interact with some contract easily right so applications uh, can be say can be is is kind of uh, abstract by some web browser based front end you, you can easily un you can understand the kind of like that yeah and the last layer the highest layer is aggregation layer. The aggregation layer is about how to interact with the protocol that we made on the protocol layer. Like we, we made some protocol like lending protocol, right? But there are so many lending protocol uh, uh, among the, the, the DeFi ecosystem. How to make a better choice among all of this protocol? the aggregation layer can provide some solution. Uh, YFI is kind of uh, aggregation layer solution. And uh, also the one inch it is, is an aggregator that provides the best path to, uh, to exchange some coin that you, if, that you want to exchange the uh, ETH to WBTC. There are so many uh, decentralized exchange among the world, uh, among the DeFi. 
how how can you change how can you choose the best pass the best rate that you can change from ETH to WTC? The uh, the one inch will help you to find out that path. So that's the aggregator means. Okay, the I think the best thing about DeFi is that you can put it on the chain without maintaining it. It's kind of, uh, this is a basic conception that uh, my CEO mentioned about. He thinks the auto fi maybe is more important than the DeFi because the auto fi means once you put some application on the blockchain, you have no need to uh, to put it on the service, right? You just you just put it on the blockchain and you have no need to maintain it. So it can reduce a lot of uh, cost at when we have to maintain some server. But I guess we still need to pay some fees uh, to make some mm, contributions to update the DeFi project. But anyway, I think uh, compared to the traditional way that we build a software, it can help a lot. Okay, uh, let's, be, let's begin the second part. We were, uh, I will make some introduction about some DeFi products. At first, uh, we will take a look at the whole picture of the DeFi ecosystem. We can see the credit and the lending classification here, and we can see the DEX here. So nowadays, we, there are so many classifications in the DeFi ecosystem. Uh, in infrastructure, and we can see some Oracle service like Chainlink, and we can see the RAN or some basic protocol or layer two protocol that uh, use the uh, zero knowledge proof technology to quick the transaction. The classification of DeFi, I think will change time by time to time because the future is unpredictable. So we should uh, study continuously. Uh, this is just an example to tell you, uh, there are so many classifications in DeFi, but we should not uh, restrict by this picture. You can find out the classification by yourself. Okay. And more in uh, 2020, there are a lot of projects emerged, right? Uh, in the January, the Curve and the Aave just launched on the mainnet. And uh, on uh, May, in, in May, the Uniswamp, the Uniswamp Vision 2 uh, launched uh, on the either the mainnet 2. And uh, in June, the Compiled is a lending protocol. And Amperforce, Amperforce is a stable coin uh, is a rebase stable coin protocol that we will mention the next week, I guess. Uh, so it's a very successful project in in last year, I guess. Yeah. So, and in the July, the Yearn Finance launched the uh, Ethereum, and uh, it, its price just goes up directly, and everyone just shocked by the just shocked by the rate that they grows. And in August, a project that forked from Uniswamp, its name is Sushi Swamp, uh, launched on the on the Ethereum ecosystem, and it's also make a huge success. And at September, November, and December, a lot of other classification of the project just launched on the DeFi ecosystem too. So. We can see a more in 2020, a lot of projects launched their mainnet on the Ethereum, which means they can provide the service directly to the users too. They are not just some white paper, which means the DeFi service just come true. Because uh, before the 2020, most of the DeFi project is not come true. It's just talking. We're just talking some projects, but we can't use it. Um, but in 2021, like now, 
we can use a lot of DeFi service on the uh, blockchain ecosystem, right? So uh, this process, I guess, which can, which is meaning the rapidly growth of the DeFi ecosystem. And uh, it also can prove that we can use DeFi to do the things that we, we are doing now. We can, we can like doing in the real world. That's a huge progress. Okay, and uh, the first project I'm going to introduce to you is Uniswap. I guess some of you may already know about it, uh, but uh, I, I will introduce more. The first person I will introduce you is Hayden Adams. It's the creator of Uniswap. He has a legend story. He was expelled from a mechanical uh, industry company in 2017. He learned Solidity by himself and called the Uniswap. The Vitalik noticed his project and sponsored him. So after three years of hard work, it becomes the biggest decentralized exchange a lot world. Nowadays, its trading volume is more than $1 billion every day, as I mentioned. So we can see the Uniswamp is a very legend story. Someone who doesn't know Solidity, uh, and it, he, he is a, a mechanism engineer before. So he just learned the Solidity by himself and built the Uniswamp project. I guess, uh, so everyone, have, uh, everyone has a chance to achieve something very great in blockchain uh, ecosystem, I guess. Okay, and uh, I, I, what do you think, how can users can use Uniswamp? I, I say Uniswamp is an uh, exchange, right? So the first design of the Uniswamp I, I will going to introduce to you is the Uniswamp pool. The Uniswamp pool can store two different kinds of token, such as ETH and BI. And once you store different uh, uh, kind of token, it will create a pool. Like if there is a ETH and a DAI pool now, then you store ETH and DAI, it will go, go, to, go into the, this ETH and the DAI pool. But if you stay ETH and uh, WBTC, it will create a new pool. So there are so many pools in the uh, Uniswam project. And uh, okay, we, we will call it the ETH to DAI pool now. Uh, the, the one role in the Uniswam protocol is the liquidity provider. Someone can provide the liquidity to the pool, but how, how can you do that? He can put some uh, some token, like we, we called about the ETH to DAI pool, right? So he need to provide the ETH token and the DAI token to the Uniswamp pool. And the pool has a real-time rate. He need to put some token into the pool by the real-time rate. Like if the ETH to DAI rate is one to 400, then he have to put one ETH and uh, 400 die at the same time to the Uniswamp pool. After that, the pool has one ETH and 400 die, right? So the traders can trade by the pool. Okay, it's the second rule. Trader is the second rule. The traders can, if, if you want to uh, sell one ETH, or what will happen if he want to sell one ETH? The pool will get one ETH, and he will uh, give back some die to the trader. That's the whole process. And about the detail, I will introduce it to you in the next slide. Okay. And there are two advanced features in Uniswamp. Uh, I will just mention. The first is the flash swamp. Okay, uh, about fresh swamp, which means you should do all the transaction in one block. Like you should lend money, trade it, and give it back in one block. You can package all of the transaction. 
and uh, it's a cheap way to do the arbitrage, I guess. And the, the second is the Oracle feature. The Oracle feature is provided by the real-time rate. Like you have a ETH to die pool now, and you want some other project uh, want to know what's the real-time rate in Uniswap now. So ETH can provide the uh, is real time rate is four hundred or is two two hundred to to the other project, which means that's a Oracle service. Oracle, in fact, is a service that provides some information. So Uniswap can provide its own the pool the pool real time rate to the other project. And now I'm going to talk in detail about what will happen if someone just sell one ETH to the to the pool. Okay. Uh, in Uniswamp, it follows by the uh, constant a constant k formula. Okay. What does means of the uh, constant k formula? Uh, I will introduce you here. Like the first thing is we have a uh, we have one ETH at first, right, in the pool, and uh, 400 die. So the K is, uh, is equal to X multiply Y. The X is one and uh, Y is 400. So K equal to 400. And if someone, uh, maybe called Tom, okay, Tom want to sell one ETH to the pool. So the pool get one ETH, right? The pool get one ETH and uh, it becomes the two, two ETH, two ETH in the pool now. So what will happen to the die? The die will follows the same formula, X multiplies Y equal to K. So the K is 400. What will Y be now? The Y will be 400 divided to two to this X and equal to 200. So now there will be only 200 die in this pool now. And the, the K still, still be the 400. So this is the constant K, the K will not change. And how many die will the Tom get back? It will get back the 400 minus 200. You will get 200 die. So he changed one ETH to 200 DAI. This is the exchange, how it works. Okay. As you can see, if someone want to trade with the pool, the sale token in the pool will increase. Like the DAI, will in, uh, the ETH will increase, right? And uh, uh, the DAI will decrease but it will also cause some problem. Like if the capacity of the pool influence the stipulate of the transaction, you, you may mm, feel unfamiliar with the stipulate word. The stipulate, the slip page word means uh, at first, the price of ETH to die is uh, 400, right? But after the trade, the price become 200, uh, no. I guess 100 because uh, the, the rate that I just mentioned here, okay? Uh, at the first, the price is 400 divided to one is equal to 400, right? And after the trade is the price is 200 divided two is 100. So the slip page is very big. You can't trade, if you want to trade something, you want, you, you, want, you don't want to this, uh, such huge state page. Okay, uh, like just I mentioned, uh, this huge state page will do harm to the trader. So some other decks try to find out the inno innovative way to solve this problem. Uh, but I guess this will be the continuous problem because once it decreases sleep page, it will do harm to the market maker which is the uh, liquidity provider. So I guess the balance uh, is it's hard to balance the both sides at the same time, yeah. 
So if you want a small slippage, you you you'd better trade on a big uh, big capacity pool. Okay, uh, so I have uh, finished the introduction of Uniswap and I'm going to introduce the maker. The maker is a project which can mine stable coin by staking asset. The stable coin in this contract called DAI. And the DAI, DAI's price will fluctuate uh, up and down around the dollar price. And maybe some of you will be curious how it can achieve that. Uh, let me first introduce how you can mine the DAI. Like if you have some ETH, right? The first thing of mining is you should deposit some specific asset like ETH or some BAT or some other cryptocurrency that uh, admitted by the maker community. And uh, you will get some DAI. So after you click the mite button, you will get some die. But the die value that you get back will less than the value of assets you deposit. Like you deposit the worth well, 150 ETH, but you can only mite 100 die. Uh, the rate between deposit and mite out depo depends on the parameter in the contract. Generally, it will be 150%, uh, which means, uh, yeah, like I just mentioned, you deposit 150, but you can only get back 100. Okay. Uh, this rate is to make sure all the system won't be bankrupt. Uh, this will mention about the liquidation. Like, uh, as, I, as I just talked, you, you you deposit 150 at first and you just got 100 at the last, right? And uh, what will happen uh, about the liquidation? Like what will happen in the liquidation? There is a limit like 120%. If the asset that you deposit, the, the wars is just go down to the, 120, then the rate between the deposit uh, asset and the buy asset comes to 120%, right? So it will trigger the liquidation. And what, what will liquidation do? The liquidation is the maker system to make sure that DAI can uh, can have a backup asset and it can be transferred or it can worse, it, its price can fluctuate around the dollar. So the liquidation makes sure the security and the worth of die. Once liquidation uh, happened, the first thing is the asset of uh, of your of your mortgage will be will be closed up, and the project will take this asset to make an auction. This auction uh, will let everybody knows and everybody can take part in it. Like I have one ETH and I make an auction. You should pay some die to bid the auction. Like uh, A bids 100 DAI, and this uh, at, at the real time, the DAI price is maybe 120. So the other people will bid, uh, like I will bid 110, and the other people bid 115. At the last, uh, who bids highest will get the ETH, and uh, the DAI paid to the protocol uh, will be destroyed. So it maintained the whole secret securing of the system. And if like if somebody borrows 100 DAI and at the last the auction only get back uh, 90 DAI, what will happen? It will it will won't be balanced in the whole, whole ecosystem, right? So what will happen in whole system? The 
holders of maker should bear to the losses. They need to make some compensation to this uh, liquidation to maintain the whole balance of the system. Okay, uh, the whole process may maybe sounds a little bit complicated, uh, and uh, I will make some other liquidation introduction to you guys next week. Maybe it will be more clearly uh, next week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to the programming uh, part. What will we build today? So uh, today we are going to build uh, the token, the Interdem token, or the BS, uh, BSC uh, Binance Smart Chain token, the ERC20 and the BEP20. The origin of the ERC20 is involved by the discussion of the EIP20. EIP20 proposal. In fact, it's a proposal, not a very not a standard. Every proposal on the exam will be discussed in the forum. And after a considerably considerable discussion, it will come out a critical or some execution to the exam uh, system. So ERC20 is a standard of the ETHM token. With ERC20, every project can, or every users can create its own asset token by himself. So there are many projects use ERC token standards to create their own token, like Golem, Storage, and OMG. So we can create our own ERC token too. Yeah, and today I will, teach you how to achieve that. The ERC token contains uh, some characters, so like the name of the token, right? And the symbol, the disseminal, and the token maybe have some uh, features, uh, not features, some, like if you, own, you, you create a token, right? You need to, a owns how much of this token and B owns how much of this token. So balance of is uh is a is a mapping, is a mapping variable which store the everyone's balance of this token. And uh, you need to achieve the transfer function. Like if you want to transfer 100 uh, some token to B, you need to use the transfer action to transfer the token. And it has another transfer function like transfer from. You can transfer some function, some token, not your address, but others address by the transfer from function. You can transfer it if you are A, you want to transfer B's token to C's address. You can use the transfer function uh, only if the B give you the allowance. So it related related to the allowance uh, mapping variable. Um, if you approve somebody to use your token, then the people can use the transfer from function to transfer your token to other address. Okay, I, I will talk detailly when I program. And uh, there are some events to log the details when you uh, interact with the contract. There is a transfer events, which means you can log the transfer, uh, fun what the transfer happens, like where do you transfer, how much, uh, what the amount of token that you transfer to some other address. And uh, there is another event approve, like how much, um, how much amount of token that you approve to, uh, to some address. So it will record the address and the amount. After that, you can check the log on EVM of every, uh, every single event that happens on the, uh, about this contract. And I will introduce a staking and a farming system based on the ERC20 token. So this farming system is, um, is based on three projects. 
uh, this three project includes two ERC20 token uh, contract, the DAP token contract, and the DAI token contract. The DAI is not the real DAI, it's just uh, I want to stimulate the asset as input. Like if you have a stable coin, you can input, you can put it into a farming project. So I use DAI token to, stimu to stimulate a pro a asset that you will put into the farming project. And when you store some DAI token to the farming project, the farming project will store how much you have stored, how, how, how much have you have staking in this uh, contract and uh, it will give you some bonus or some interest. And the interest is not a DAI token. It will give you some DAP token, uh, the project of farming token, farming project. So the DAP token, will uh, distribute to the users who stake the DAI token. And I will um, talk in detail about how it's uh, achieved this function. There are three function in the staking, uh, in the farming contract. The first is the stake token. Like the first thing you have to do in farming is you need to stake some token into the farming project. Okay, when you use the stake token function, you only have to uh, input the amount that you want to stake and uh, interact with the stake token function, then you can stake your token. And the second function is the issue token. Like after you stake your token into the farming project, it will record how much DAI you have stored in this contract. and uh, the owner of the project can interact with the issue token function and distribute the DAP token to, uh, to the users who stake the DAI token. And the third function is the unstake, fun unstake token function. Like if you don't want to take apart this project anymore, you want to quit, okay? Uh, so you, you can use interact with the unstake token function. You can unstake your DAI. Uh, then the die will go back to your address. So that's all of the, that's all function of the farming contract, I guess. And now, okay, the pre uh, presentation part is finished and I'm going to program and talk to you in detail about how the code work. Okay. Uh, the first thing uh, is we need to go to the um, BSC ID and uh, we need to log in our, uh, okay, we need to log in our MetaMask and change it to the testnet. Okay, uh, we have uh, three, three files here that we need to use. The first, I will talk to you how to create a how to create a ERC twenty Solidity file. So I will create it uh, step by step. And the first thing is we need to create a, a Solidity file. Okay, I will name it as ERC twenty. Oh, sorry. ERC20 SOL. Okay. And we give the first is pragma right? and solidity. And we need to give it a specific compiled version. So 0 0.6.0 and uh, use a range. Okay. And uh, the second things that we can we can look at this first. Uh, we need to create a contract. The contract is the token's name. It's connected to the token. So, uh, okay. Contract. Okay, I will give the name maybe S, S token. Okay. And uh, the the name of the 
name of the ERC20 should uh, define by the string. A string public name. The name can equal to, like here, I will be test. Okay. And uh, there are some several characters in the token I will just copy. Like what, what, what the symbol of your token and what the total supply of your token and the decimals. You can uh, change it by yourself if you want to design your own token. Okay, and uh, the symbol maybe can be TS, yeah, something like that. Okay, and uh, the service, uh, okay. And we should make some events first, like I just mentioned, there are two events, right? The first is transfer. In the transfer event, there are three things. The first things is where do you transfer from? The second is what, uh, where do you transfer to? Like uh, from A to B, then the A address will be you in, in the form and uh, from, and the B will be into the two. And if you transfer A to B 100, then the 100 will be the value. Okay, so this is about the event transfer. And the index means you can search this log by the index. You can transfer, you can search, uh, like you can search someone's address to in, in the log and it will comes out about the transfer event. Uh, and the second is the approval, approval event. The approval event is related if you want some, some other contract, uh, give them authority to use your token. You can, uh, it means uh, it uh, triggered the approve function. Okay. The approve function means uh, like the owner, a allowed B to use 100 token. What will happen here? So A will be the owner and the B will be the spender and uh, the value will be 100. And also the A and the B will be the index and so they can be searched in the log. Okay, so just copy this to the ERC20. Okay, after, uh, after talk about the uh, event, I'm going to talk about the uh, mapping variable. There are two mapping variables in the ERC20. The first is balance, and the second is allowed. Uh, do you remember that we just mentioned in the PPT, like everyone, okay, if you, if you create a token, like if you create a die, A on A on the 100 die and B on 200 die. Who, uh, how can we store this data? We store this data by the balance mapping variable. So every, every address value will store in the balance, balance variable. Uh, we can understand by that. If A's address is uh, one, two, three, and the B's address is one, two, four. So uh, A's address is connected, the, the, the key value, uh, and the key and the, the value will be 100. And uh, the address of one, two, four, the value will be 200. So you can just find the address value in the balance variable. Okay. And the second is the allowed variable. The allowed variable is uh, kind of complicated. It's hard to understand about this, but this, this variable store the permission, the allowance that one address give to another address. Like if A give, 100 allowance to B. Then in the A, like, okay, A, uh, on C, uh, on ED, and how A plus, 
and the B address. It will the, the value of uh, of this will be one hundred. Like th this means the B can use a uh, can use one hundred token in a address. Okay, um, maybe it can help you to understand. I, I will use the specific example in the following function. So maybe uh, you can understand, but it's really hard to understand, I know, yeah. Okay, so um, we, will be, we will go to the function part. The first function is constructor, the function that will execute uh, when the contract deploy. Okay. In the constructor function, we achieve the we achieve the assignment of the total supply. Like what will what all of the token will be uh, or will be the will make an initialization of the total supply will give to the message sender, the creator of the contract. So the creator of the contract will all will own all of the token supply. Okay. I guess this part can be easy to understand. Uh, in the balance, this is balance uh, variable, right? And the message sender is the who creates this, who creates this contract because this is a constructor function. So message sender is the address who creates this contract. Uh, this can be the uh, contract owner, I guess, yeah. So uh, the assignment, the value of total supply to this address, it, which means this address on uh, this, this values token. Okay. And then we have a function for for the other users can fetch the total supply amount of this token. Like they can know how what's uh, the total supply of the uh, test token here. Okay, the total supply. The first thing is is visible. It's public, so every users can see it and use it. The second thing is is a view function. So after you interact with this function. Uh, you can see the return value. The return value will be the total supply, the total supply that we defined here. Okay, and it will return a uint uh, 256 variable, which uh, is equal to the total supply uh, variable type. Okay, and then it's uh, Mm, same way that we need to provide a function to let users to check their balance of this token. Like if A owns 100 of uh, by token, S token, he can use this function to uh, fill in his address and uh, he can see all oh, how many S token that I have. Uh, it will return 100. Okay. Uh, this can be a kind of difficult part. Uh, when we talk about transfer, transfer is you want to transfer some money from your account to some other account. The transfer function can only be used by the user who owns his own money. So transfer has no input parameter from. Only users can interact with the transfer function. When you use the transfer function, like A want to transfer 100 to B and A interact with the transfer function. So the address two will be B, B's address, and the value will be 100. But what if there is only 50 test token in A on A account, what will happen? So the first thing of this transfer function is, it will check the token amount on the A account. 
if the token amount is less than the value he want to transfer, this uh, transfer request will be rejected. Okay. And if the number is uh, more than he want to transfer, okay, the transfer can be executed. The first thing is uh, the message sender. The message sender is A, right? A want to transfer money to B. So if A transfer 100 to B, then we should minus the amount on A account at first. So uh, this can be hard to understand. Equal to the original number of A and minus the value he transferred. The second is you need to add the amount on B's account. So you should add the amount of origin amount in B's account and uh, add up the value that he that A transferred. Okay. And after those two calculation, we finished uh, the process of transfer. And then we emit the transfer events here. So this is the whole process of how we achieve a transfer uh, process. Okay. And uh, then we are, talking, we are going to talk about the proof. A proof is a function that if like A want to you uh, B want to use A account to transfer to C, not B directly use his uh, use his own account to transfer to C. He want to use A account to transfer to C. So at first A needs to give B a permission. So the approve means A give B a permission to use his uh, some token in his amount. So B can use it. So approve is the function that's to give uh, B the permission. The address is the spender, like A approve B. So this address could be B and 100. So A allowed B to use 100 test token uh, in his account. And you will return um, parameter, like it's true or not, okay. So what, what will happen? Like if A interact with the approve function, then the allowed variable and the first, the first parameter here is A's address. The second parameter is B's address. So in this parameter, uh, in this variable, uh, we should assign the value that we want the B, the A allowed B to use the amount token, uh, the token amount in his account. Like here, uh, we can we can easily understand uh, equal to 100 or something like that. Yeah. So with this, the B can use A's account token, and we can emit a approve event. Okay. Uh, maybe this will, yeah, we'll, we'll kindly come to the last, but yeah, this will be a kindly complicated part. Yeah. Maybe you can watch the record if you don't understand about the detail. Okay, the next function is the transfer from. The transfer from if means after uh, the A give B the permission, then the B can use the transfer from function to transfer the token from A account to C account. Yeah. So the first, there are two uh, conditions here. After, uh, before the transfer from function execute, uh, you need to check those two, those two conditions. The first condition is A, uh, like if B want to transfer A, uh, want to transfer 100 test token from A to C. The first thing is you need to check how many token in A's account. Does it can fill the condition? Like it is more than 100 or not? Okay, if it's filled, then we pass the first condition. And the second is we need to check if A allows B 
to use 100 tokens in his account. If this condition fills two, then we can go next, okay? And uh, this part is kind of uh, similar uh, with this part, yeah. Just the different variable in local variable in the transfer from function, okay? And the difference is here. Like if at, at first we, the A give B, um, 100 allowance and uh, B use A account to transfer to C 100 allowance, then the value in here will be first is 100 and the minus 100. So at last, here will be zero. The B cannot use any test token in A account anymore. It, um, um, despite the A give B uh, more allowance. Yeah. Okay. So after this, uh, we use another transfer emit a transfer event to emit this uh, this process. Okay. Uh, this is almost the all of the of the EAC token, but at last I will add the uh, allowance allowance function to let users to check, okay, how, how many token that A uh, allowed B to use, like, like something like that. So the people can check about the amounts they allowed. Okay, this is almost uh, all of the ERC token and I will deploy, compile and deploy it and make an example to you to show how to use an ERC20 contract. Okay, uh, it complies success. And, okay, we need to select, we need to select the corresponding, oh, not this one, ERC20. Uh, test token, test token. Okay, this one. And uh, then we will deploy it. Um, sorry, I have to check what happened. Okay, uh, maybe. Has the token deployed? Okay, oh, now the token just appeared here and uh, it has a lot of feature that we can use it. The first is the, uh, like we can first check its name. Okay, I, its name is test token, right? We can just use submit it and it will get back, it's fetch his uh, name here. Its name is test token and this symbol is TS, right? TS here. And its total supply is, Okay, uh, one billion, one million, or one. I don't know. I don't know how much it is. It <laughs> okay, and uh, then we can do some tests. The first test is I will use this ERC twenty to transfer other of my account. Like, okay, uh, I can. This is my okay. Uh, this is my original account, right? And uh, I will transfer to this account. So the first, I will uh, I will copy the address of my second account and go back to my original account. Let's check 
let's let's check the balance of my original account. Like here, we can copy my address and uh, paste here. So we can see the the value in my original account, and then we can transfer. We can transfer, transfer, okay, transfer. We can transfer our token to other account. Like we can transfer token to to the second account, and uh, like I want to transfer ten thousand to it. Okay, it's confirmed. Then we can use the balance of to uh, to search to check the balance, the value in the second account. This is the second account address, and uh, we can paste it here and check the value here. The value in the second account is 10,000, right? So, which means we transfer success, the transfer progress is success. Okay, and uh, the other things that we can paste is uh, if I, I use the I want to allow the second account to transfer some money from the original account to the other account. What should I do? The first thing is, okay, I will uh, go back to the original account. This is the original account, right? And uh, I will, okay, I will go to this account and uh, Okay, let me let me have a look. Okay, I, I want to let the second account to transfer my money to other accounts. So I will give some allowance to the second account. The second account is this. Okay, and I will approve, approve the second account like, uh, like, okay, two million. And I, sub I submit it. It will be, it allows uh, some to use your TS. This is a proof window. You can click yes. Okay, the transaction confirmed. And then uh, we can check the allowed uh, allowance first. Okay, the first thing is to wait a minute. Uh, maybe something wrong with this. Okay, maybe I can. The owner spender spender is spender is the second account, and uh, the original account is this. Okay, and we can check it. Uh, no, maybe. Uh, let me have a look. Okay, maybe I just get. Mm, what happened? Wait a minute, let me have a look. If I approve my account to this account, oh, oh no, 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 I, I didn't transfer, I didn't change the origin number here. Okay, the first thing is we need to change to the original account, and then we need to uh, use approve function and click it because uh, last time I used the account to do that, so it will, it's not a correct uh, process. And this time, Okay, uh, this is correct now. So this means the um, this this address can use the owner's address account. 
can use two millions on our address account. Okay, and uh, then we can interact with the transfer from this function to achieve that the, okay, the first thing is we need to change to the second account, right? And we want to use the first account token. So it's from first account and to some third account, I guess. Okay, third account to this account. And uh, the allowance is 2 million. So we can click, uh, we can fill in any value that less than 2 million. Maybe I will fill in 10,000. Uh, wait a minute, let me check. Let me check the, okay. We should use the second address to do the test. Okay, it's success. So now it should be ten thousand in the third in the third address now. Yeah, in this address, I will check that. I can use the balance of to check that. Okay, so it's ten thousand in the in this address. So we can see all of the function in the in test token success. Okay, and then we can talk about the farming system. The farming system is not only contain uh, the two, two of the basic ERC20 token, and also contain a token farm file, right? Okay, the token farm is an, another contract not a ERC20 contract, but it also contains some characters. Like the first is the name of the farm contract is DAPP token farm, okay. And the second is we need to um, use some, um, we can say library or some contract that we predefined in the early, in, in the early, when we defined the ERC20. Like after we defined the DAP token, we need to input, input it by the import, import sentence, to input in the token form uh, solidity file. Then the solidity file can use the contract of the DAP token and the DAI token. And it has a variable to store the owner of this contract. Here is the three mapping variable to store the, okay, the status of the staking and the amount, the amount of the user staking in the contract. The first is staking balance, like A store 100 in the form contract, then the A address, uh, A address value will be 100, something like that, yeah. And the B, uh, the, the, the second is the has stake. Like uh, if A has stake in this contract, the has stake will be true. And uh, the second is uh, if A is staking in this contract, then the staking contract uh, related uh, value will be true. But if A uh, stake was stake in this contract, but he quit, um, quit recently, and he is not staking now, then the staking uh, value will be false. And uh, the, there is an array to store the staker's address. Uh, we will be used when we distribute the token. Okay, when we when we deploy the contract, the first thing is to execute the constructor. The constructor will in uh, will need to has two input parameters. It's the die token contract address and the dap token contract address. Only if you input those two uh, address, then the the farm contract can 
use this uh, early compiled and early deployed contract. So here it uh, gives the assignment to those two variables and uh, give the on give the owner variable the creator the contract creator mass uh, address. Okay. After that, we are going to the first function that we mentioned in the PPT, the stake token. Okay. The stake token uh, is we use the stake token function to stake the number, the, the, to, the amount of token from a user's account to the contract, right? If you, you if users interact with the stake token function, like A want to stake 100 die token to the farm contract, then he interact with the state token function and input 100, then it will execute the state token process. The state token process, the first thing is the amount should more than zero because you can't uh, store some negative value, right? And uh, the second thing is you transfer your die token from your account to the contract account. And it will change the staking balance of the address who stake the die token, right? Okay. And uh, it will push if your if your address is not in the has stake array, then it will push you push your address into the has stake array. And uh, the status of has stake is changed too. The most important thing is this: you need to uh, the 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 form contract will record every user's uh, staking balance in this smart contract. So it can trace uh, when you want to unstake or you will all distribute the interest. They can check this value. Yeah. And the second uh, I'm going to talk about maybe is this. Yeah. Because uh, the first thing after the stake is issue, right? Uh, when, when you issue a token, like the A stored 100 to your account, your, to the farm contract, and the owner can trigger the issue token function. The issue token function, okay, the first condition is the, uh, the user who want to interact with the issue token function can only be the owner, only be the uh, specific users. And uh, it will go through all of the stakers uh, in the in stakers array and uh, to find out if this user is staking or not. If this user is sta is still staking and it will give the if it will give this user the same amount as they deposit, the same amount of debt token as they deposit of die token. Uh, I don't know if you can understand. Like if you deposit 100 die token to this amount, after the issue token function, you will get 100 DAP token. Yeah, this is two kinds of different, uh, two different kinds of token. And uh, here is the process. Like it, it checks the staking uh, status at first, and it uh, do the transfer of the DAP token to the users address. And after all of this process, uh, now the, the, per, the users who stake die token will get uh, the same amount of tap token. Okay. And the third is the on stake token function. Like after uh, when, when, you, when you have uh, get the air job or you have get the reward, you want to quit and uh, the user can interact with the on stake token function. So in the on stake on stake token function, the first thing is uh, the function will check the is staking status of the user, like uh, whether the user is staking or not. If the user if the user is not staking now, it will reject this requirement. And if the user is is staking now, the it will check the balance of the user, and it will transfer the same amount of the balance. Uh, the user stake in this account and transfer it back to the user and uh, change it, change the user's staking status and finish all of this program, pro progress, yeah. Okay, 
this is basically the three function in the in in the farm contract. But also, uh, I add a new function for for users who want to uh, who want to check his staking amount or in the in the token farm in the token farm contract. Like if A stake one hundred Dai token to the contract, he can use the stake amount function to check. Uh, how many Dai token that has stored in uh, that has stake in the uh, farm contract? Okay, uh, so it will returns the amount of the user staking. Yeah, uh, almost. This is the um, this is the all content that I want to introduce to you. The first thing is about uh, ERC twenty token, right? Like is uh. Um, what kind of um how many character will be in the ERC twenty token and the event is event and the mapping uh, what does means of every mapping variables and the functions how how can you use that and uh, maybe yeah you can try by yourself about how to use the token farm contract I will put this whole project. On the GitHub, and you can um, try all any uh, do any test or try by yourself. Uh, we, we we can we can provide a link to you guys. Yeah. So maybe this is the end of uh, this week's uh, presentation, and maybe some of you ask. Uh, I can see a lot of you ask a question, and uh, maybe I will select some to answer. Okay. Check the. Wait. Yeah. So thank you so much for that, okay. Prophet. Um, <laughs> yeah. While you're just taking a look through the questions, uh, um, I've got a little bit of information to update um, our future army of finance smart chain developers on. So I know a lot of you have uh, filled in the form. Thank you so much for that. Um, we'll announce the winners next week, those 10 lucky winners. Um, but a lot of you will have remembered that you would have applied to be group leaders. Um, you know, so once we wrap up the program, taking things forward, um, we've now created those groups we spoke of. And those of you that um, applied to be gr group leaders, please make sure that straight after this call, you check your emails. And if you are successful, you'll see an email with the subject, congratulations, you have been selected as a group leader. So what you'll need to do is just go into that email. There'll be a specific group you have to join for the next steps, um, but congratulations. And if you did apply, but you haven't uh, received this email yet, it doesn't mean that you aren't successful. It just means that we haven't created certain additional groups yet. So over the next few weeks, we'll still be creating more groups. And as we create more groups, we'll be allocating more leaders. So it, don't be disheartened. It doesn't mean that you're not successful yet. But those group leaders who have been successful, find that email, join the group. And I also have some more exciting news. So every week from now going forward, just to make sure that you're not falling asleep during the class, um, we'll have a quiz where you can actually win um, 150 USD, not each. Um, so we'll choose 10 lucky winners to win 15 USD every single week, which means this week you have two opportunities to win, filling in the uh, registration form which remember to be very careful with your name because that's the name that's going to appear on your certificate. And then two, fill in the multiple choice quiz for today. So we'll be announcing the winners for both the MCQ quiz and the registration form um, next week. But now that I've gotten the admin out of the way, Prophet, back to you. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I have seen a lot of people uh, just talk about the assi assignment, right? Okay. Uh, the
the first thing is uh, when is the each week assignment required to be in their uh, deadline? Okay, about the deadline of the assignment. Um, the assignment is for for us to see what's the how about the situation or the uh, that how how the student can control or can understand the knowledge. So the basic is I, I want to see a lot of you have finished the assignment at first. Okay. Uh, the second thing is we will make assignment to become uh, the requirement of, of you guys to join in the final demo show. If you only if you've uh, finished the assignment, then you can join in the final demo show uh, project. About that, we will discuss maybe uh, later uh, about the detail. Yeah. Uh, about the assignment and where to submit it. I, I guess I've mentioned this part in the Discord channel. The first thing is you need to log in the chain classes and uh, you have to make a registration. And after that, I will enroll uh, the users. I guess there is no, not so much users recently because I, I don't see many, many students recently yet. And after that, you can see a masterclass project and you can click in and see the, you, you can see the daily, uh, the weekly uh, material material and the uh, YouTube link. You can watch our record in there and uh, I will give the specific, uh, the week's assignment in there too. And about the program assignment, you can just uh, fill in, uh, copy the, copy the, code and fill in in the uh, in the form in the asset form I guess yeah there is you can just copy the code and paste there and just submit the assignment that's enough yeah uh, about the MCQ quiz doesn't have any attempt to input how are you gonna go back uh, I just collect the email and the um, And the I just call I just uh, um, use the email and a uh, form to connect the student in chain classes and uh, in the Discord. So yeah, we will group up student in the Discord maybe later. Yeah. Uh, will we cover NFT somewhere along this course? Uh, maybe not in this course, but maybe in the um, later later course in uh, among with the Binance uh, Binance Smart Chain or yeah, we will discuss it maybe later. Yeah, if someone has this requirement. Uh the asset and the sentiment. There's uh, uh the asset and uh, sentiment. There's in first. I don't know what does this means. You you do you do you want to know the asset is on the infrastructure layers or not? I, I guess like I have just mentioned about this, like uh like ERC20 is belong to the asset layer. And about like uh Oracle or some provide service assets, uh, uh, protocol will be the protocol there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where we have access to be a citizen after cross through chain IDE. Uh, I guess you got chain IDE. Uh, I I'm not sure what I'm talking about, but yeah. The BSC IDE provides, uh, we, we, we support the MetaMask and uh, the Binance wallet. So you can uh, have access to the BSC testnet by change the RPC, the network to the uh, BSC network like this. Like you click here and, uh, and you, can, you can change your, you can change your uh, network from the either them to BSC testnet or BSC mainnet. You can, uh, you can, you can find the tutorial on the Binance, uh, on the Binance Academy or on our website. We have a tutorial for people to how to set the RPC uh, node on the welcome like. 
you can find it here. We have a tutorial here. Yeah. Ah, uh, what have what does an uh, index address means? Okay, uh, index address means you can it can become an index of this variable after it um, logged into the EVM. You can search the you can search this variable and you can just have a list of the variable that appeared in the EVM. Please, why didn't you map the log address to the balance directly? I, I don't know what are you talking about in fact. Please, why didn't you map the allowed address to the balance directly? The allowed address to the balance directly. Uh, what do you mean? The allowed, the allowed here, like like here. The allowance, the allowed, is uh related to the owner of the account and uh, the specific spender of who can spend the owner's token. So, I guess this is a relation, right? Uh, I'm not sure what what do you mean. Yeah, can there more than one mapping of the rest to? You in in a uh, yeah, there can be more than one mapping of address to a U int. Uh, if you if you are feel confused with, with why there why there should be two index here, um, I guess you can stimulate by yourself if you want to achieve the function that you want someone to use your money. Uh, what what can it be? So it must be the first is whose money. The second is who can be used. So there are two index. So there should be uh, uh, two, two, two address of the mapping. Yeah. Okay, check Binance, YouTube, or still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The about YouTube or better still uh, chain classes. Yeah, it, you can do both. Yeah, about the chain classes IO, we will upload the uh, we will update the daily record on chaincross.io and uh, the Binance will update their uh, their record on YouTube too. Yeah. Okay. Can we get the GitHub report of? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I will upload the the whole of the staking, uh, the farming project and the ERC twenty project uh, on the GitHub maybe later in this week because I need to add some comments. And after that, I will um, uh, I will give you the example of those those project. Yeah, you use the testnet contract on the front end, or do we have to deploy on mainnet first? Uh, we can use testnet contracts on front end apps. Uh, in fact, I will introduce this part in I guess the week after next week. I will introduce that because we have a function, the BSC ID, the chain ID have a function which you can preview the HTML uh, on in BSC ID. Yeah, I will introduce that part in the week after next week. Okay. Uh, can you work with two things for a class model get compared to in the MetaMask without getting a finance bag into them? What do you mean uh, about this part? I guess I'm not, uh, I don't know much about it. Maybe you can ask Binance. Yeah, you can, you can, you can ask about the Binance Smart Chain. How, how can you do that? I'm not good at this. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. About the grid, uh, it's not a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. I will check the, everyone who finished about the assignment or not. That's a problem, yeah. Uh, have a same issue, uh, put, push my code chain ID. How do I do it? You want to push your code on chain ID to GitHub. The first thing you can uh, download, download it. There is download, there is a download uh, button here. You can download it to your local variable, uh, local, environment and uh, package it to upload to the GitHub. Yeah.
uh, unable to log into chain classes after registering. This is maybe this is you 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 misunderstood the name ID or secret or you don't remember secret. I, I guess others can come in maybe change a change an email and try again. Yeah, you need to verify the, your address and account at first. Which category does year finance farming fall into? Year finance is a uh, aggregator, the interest aggregator, and the farming. The farming can be a part of a protocol, but it can also be seen as if it's an aggregator there, it concerns a lot of protocol interest, then it can be seen as an aggregator. But it's, if it's only a farming protocol, then it belongs to the protocol layer. Yeah. So in fact, there, the only difference between, uh, between this layer, between the aggregator layer and the protocol layer is whether the protocol uh, interact with a lot of a contract and do the best choice, or it just interact with one protocol and uh, do the simple, do the simple works. Okay. And uh, okay, maybe yeah, there are too many questions. I can't answer for of it. And about last week's uh, question form, I'm sorry about that. I have no, I really have no time to answer that. But I, I will, I will answer part of it and uh, uh, paste a Google form in the Discord. Uh, I, I noticed some of you just submit like 18 questions in the Google form and I will answer it maybe in two days. Yeah. And you can continue ask what you want uh, in the Google form to, to, to let the volunteers collect about the question and they will uh, give it to me and I will answer it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for your listening and uh, thank you for joining our, our masterclass program. Okay, thank you. And maybe this is the end of today's class. Hello, Emmanuel. Hi, yeah, so I think Emmanuel's left us, but thank you so much for joining us. If you guys need um, anything, just remember you can get a hold of all of us in the Discord. Um, remember, just a final reminder, fill in that Google form. Uh, the name you put on there is the, what the name that's going to go on your certificate. And if you want to graduate, if you want that certificate with CZ's signature on it, make sure before Monday you are caught up to at least um, up to week three, including week three. So by Monday, you need to have finished week three's assignment. Um, 